Frank, the question, are we alone? Is humanity the only intelligent species in our galaxy, if not the entire universe, is one of the most fundamental questions that we can ask. And you have been pioneering work in searching for extraterrestrial intelligence. Yet some would say that because there's no evidence that we see, whether on Earth or artifacts in, in the galaxy, that, that, that there are none. How do we begin to understand the question and to appreciate the, the philosophical implications of it? Well, <clears throat> at this point there are no philosophical implications because we really have not looked hard for signs of intelligent life in the universe. And I think the reason that uh, so far we have seen no signs of those life can be expressed in a kind of peculiar way. And that is, there's no free lunch in the galaxy. The extraterrestrials are not going to make it easy for us. Most of them will just go about their business, making no effort to make their presence known. And we know, that, for instance, to detect the lights of cities at night, like the lights of our cities, require telescopes far larger than we have. Uh, the Earth at night is, from a, from a high-flying airplane, is full of lights. But to see those lights from the distance of even the nearest stars takes a telescope that's about five miles in diameter. Mm. We're not even close to having that. So it's not surprising we haven't seen the lights of cities at night. Another way which you can detect other civilizations is to use the focusing power of your star to act as a gravitational lens and create brilliant images of far distant planets and cities. But we have not exploited that capability. It requires some space prowess that's a little beyond what we have now. So the extraterrestrials, in most cases, will not be doing things to help us. But even if they choose to help us, to make their presence known by sending signals intentionally to attract our attention, they probably aren't going to make it very easy. They only want to attract the attention of civilizations that are serious about learning about other civilizations in space. So it's fair enough for them to think, well, we, we should each, each expend perhaps the same amount of resources uh, to make contact. So we'll only transmit a signal, which is detectable if somebody puts some major resources into building a detection system. Well, we know how to build such a detection system, but uh, we have never had the resources to do it. And so in our searches for signs of life, we only sporadically look with instruments. We look at points in the sky, different stars, only for a brief period, a few minutes. Uh, we've looked at only a small fraction of all the stars we could look at. And so we have not really made the effort that's required to succeed. So the result is that the fact that we have not detected anything has as yet no philosophical implication other than that uh, we haven't tried hard enough. Well, no matter what answer we would get in the future, if we really try, would have deep philosophical, if not also religious connotations. Definitely. And so therefore, for that reason alone, either way, this is something that humanity should and must do. Humanity should and must do it. At some point we will do it. To do it does require substantial resources, and not by some standards, not very substantial. We're talking about uh, resources that are less than the cost of one space mission, for example. Uh, <clears throat> but those resources have not been available. If we had those resources, how many different stars could, or frequencies could we be able to uh, do simultaneously? Because that, that's critical, because we're really mm -hmm doing a shotgun approach. We have to have a very broad uh, approach to a large numbers to, to deal with this appropriately. Uh, you've put your finger on something we've learned from our, our searches, and that is you do have to make a very broad search 
you also have to make an almost continuous search because in our searches for radio signals, on a number of occasions, we have detected signals which had all the earmarks of being from an extraterrestrial civilization, but they did not persist long enough for us to, to, to conclude they truly were extraterrestrial. And that suggests that the signals may be transient, they're not there all the time, they may be at different frequencies at different times, and so when I talk about the resources required to do a real search, a powerful search, we need the resources such that we can build a telescope that can look at all of the sky all the time on a very large range of frequencies, all the frequencies that penetrate the atmosphere of the Earth. Uh, we know how to do that. All the technology to do it exists. But to put so it... So how, how many stars would we be, systems would we be monitoring done maximally? Uh, we would realistically be able to get signals from every star in our galaxy. Really? Yes. Uh, to do that exactly, we have to have the telescope on the equator so it can see the whole, yeah, sure. the whole celestial sphere. But uh, if it's near the equator, you're going to, you're, you will see all of the plane of the Milky Way, which is where most of the stars are. So yeah, even with telescopes in the United States, you could, you could uh, look at 95% of the stars of the galaxy. Uh, so that is what's required. Now, what's holding that up? We need public awareness and knowledge of these prospects and how important it would be to us. And so it's public education that is the bottleneck in this case. When enough people realize that this is worth doing, and it doesn't cost all that much, one space mission, it will get done. It's not, it's not happening right now. But the importance of it in, in, for the, the, the self-appreciation of what life is is exceedingly important. There's nothing we can do that, that's similar. It, it's granted high risk. But it's also, I return, pardon my speaking like an investment right. banker. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very high return. And it is high risk, but uh, you know, we've lost space missions and nobody cried their eyes out. Mm. And this is the cost of one space mission. If it fails, well, it's one space mission that didn't fail. But I, it won't fail if it runs long enough. And when it succeeds, it's going to be the biggest cost-effective cost-benefit experiment we ever did in history. I might argue that it can't fail because any answer it gets yeah. is, a, uh, is a dramatic deepening of humanity's understanding of its place in the universe. Yes. Uh, Carl Sagan said it very well. He said, whether they are out there or they are not, the answer is of the profoundest importance. If they're there, there's just a great wealth of knowledge to be obtained from them. If they're not there, it tells us, oh, we've missed something and we are very special. And we have to be very careful to protect and preserve our planet. 